Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to do practice on posting journal entries to the ledgers and using the ledgers to prepare the trial balance. So let's dive on in. Here we go. I give you a series of journal entries and I tell you, post the following journal entries to their respective ledgers. And then I give you another page where I say, now use those ledgers to make the trial balance. I also tell you to assume the company just started operations. The only impact that assuming the company just started operations has is all ledgers start with a zero balance instead of something already in them. All right, with that said, um, go ahead and pause the video, try this out for yourself, and when you're ready, come on back. I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. We are going to need some T accounts over on the right, so I am just going to start making some. I know cash is usually a big one, so I'll make that one extra big at the beginning there. I don't know how many I'm going to need, but I'll just draw a few, and then we'll go from there. So um, I made some T accounts. If I need more, I'll draw more. I'm going to go down my list of accounts that's in this ledger right here, and I'm just going to go ahead and start labeling my T accounts to make sure I have them all. So, of course, I need an account for cash. Looks like I need an account for common stock. Looks like I need a supplies account. I'm going to need an accounts payable account some prepaid insurance, uh, already have cash, cash, some service revenue, uh, some salaries expense, so salaries expense, and also some salaries payable. So I'll create another one there, salaries payable. Um, I'm going to need accounts payable. I already have that. I already have cash. I already have salaries payable. I already have cash. All right, so that's it. So it looks like I have a total of eight ledgers over here. Remember, T accounts and ledgers are essentially one and the same, just two different presentation styles. Um, and, and so when I post my journal entries to the ledgers, I'm literally breaking apart the journal entries piece by piece and putting the activity where it goes in their respective ledgers. So um, starting off with the first entry, cash, debit 150. So there's my first entry to cash. Now, again, good practice would be to put a date, maybe a little description of what's going on here. For simplicity, I'm just going to put the values um, to show you how this is done. Common stock is the offsetting credit in that case, 150. My next entry, debit supplies of 12,000. My offsetting credit is accounts payable. For the next one, I have a debit to prepaid insurance of 3,000. My offsetting uh, credit is cash. For the next one, I have a debit to cash for 5,500. My offsetting credit is service revenue. For the next one, I have a debit to salaries expense of 15,000 with a credit accompanying it to salaries payable. For the next one, I have got a debit to my accounts payable for 6,000 with an offsetting credit to cash. And for my last one, I have a 15,000 debit to salaries payable with an offsetting credit to cash. So at this point, I have officially posted the journal entries to their respective ledgers. My next step is going to be to create a trial balance. And so in creating a trial balance, what I'm going to need is the ending balance from each of these ledgers. Now, most of them are easy because supplies, common stock, prepaid insurance, and service revenue, oh, and salaries expense, all only have one line item in them. Therefore, their ending balances are equal to that one line item. So that's simple enough. Remember, you do need to specify whether these things are debits or credits, so keep everything on the right side. Then I'm going to have to tally up the ones that had more than one line item in them, and that's starting with cash, which is usually one of your biggest ones. And so, whoops, bring in my calculator here. Um, cash, 150000 debit plus another 5500 debit why did i start with the debits well remember cash is an asset the debit side is the positive side so that's what i'm adding um, that gives me a total of 155 500 in debits i'm going to subtract out all of those credits so minus three minus six and minus fifteen thousand that's going to get me to a total end balance in cash of 131 500 remember this is an asset so that balance is on the debit side because it's a positive number and that's the positive side of an asset account. All right, I have so uh no, I have AP. AP had a $12,000 credit in it. Why am I starting with the credit? Well, this is a liability. So the positive numbers are on the credit side, the right side. And we subtracted a $6,000 debit. Obviously, I didn't need to do that in my calculator. 
but I went ahead and did it just for illustrative purposes while the calculator is open. Remember that $6,000 balance. That balance is a credit balance. You can tell two ways. One, when you're taking the difference in these numbers, the larger number is on the right. So the end tally should wind up on the right. The other reason is because, again, accounts payable is a liability. The positive numbers are on the credit side. So if you have a positive balance, that's where it goes. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, it looks like the only other one is our salaries payable. And salaries payable had a credit of 15000 and then a debit of 15000 which means it has a zero balance left. Why do I put that on the credit side? This is a liability. Therefore, the balance belongs on the credit side. Even when that balance is zero, we tend to display it on the side where the balance would normally appear. All right, so we have all of our ending balances that we are going to need for our trial balance. I'm going to just circle them to quickly bring them to my attention here. And then we will go ahead and set up our trial balance on the next slide. Trial balances have a particular format. I'm just going to name it the trial balance up here. You don't really have to have any specific formal header. You typically put the accounts on the left. You do a column for debits, a column for credits, and the accounts typically follow the order of A, L, then SE, then revenue, then expense. Within those categories, you tend to put them in the order of the ledgers. My ledgers are sloppily all over the place, so I'm not going to stick to any particular order. All right, here we go. Assets. I have cash. I have supplies. I have prepaid insurance. And those look like the only assets I have in this problem. So cash has 131, 500 debit balance. I have, what did I say? I said I had supplies and I had prepaid insurance. All right, and if I go look back at my ending balances, my supply balance is 12,000, my prepaid insurance is 3,000. 12,000, 3,000. Again, these are debit balances because these are assets. Next up, I need my liabilities. Uh, in this problem, I have accounts payable. I have salaries payable, but it's got a zero balance, so we don't actually have to list it. So it looks like accounts payable might be the only liability to deal with. It's got a $6,000 credit balance in it. So AP, $6,000 on the credit side. Next up, I need equity. I have one equity account in this problem. That is my common stock with a balance of $150,000 on the credit side. Common stock, $150,000 on the credit side. Then I need my revenues. I have one revenue in this problem. That's my service rev at 5,500 credit. Serve rev, 5,500 credit. And finally, my expenses. I have one expense, and that is my salary's expense at a 15,000 debit. By the way, I'm just going to warn you now, when you do these types of problems, make sure you always get in the habit of going back to the debit side when you get to the expenses. It's so easy, you get caught up because you're on a string of credits. Liabilities is a credit, equity is a credit, revenue is a credit, and then you get to expense and oh, you're back to the debit side. And if you forget to move back to the debit side, it's gonna mess up your whole trial balance. All right, we have used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven accounts. We had eight T accounts, but one of them zeroed out, so it's not listed here. We've got them all. One last step to our trial balance, and that is tally up the two sides and make sure that they are equal. So the credit side, it looks like I can just do on my own. I have 150 plus 6, 156 plus 5,500 puts us at 161, 500. The debit side, I'm just going to go ahead and pull out the calculator since it's a few more numbers. 131, 500 plus 12,000 plus 3,000 plus 15,000 puts us at 161, 500. They are equal. That is a great sign. That means that the trial balance does not indicate that there are errors. It's not perfect. There could be errors undetectable by the trial balance, but at least we know that any errors that would be detected don't exist. All right, that's it for this one. Hope you found it helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.